Welcome to our Wednesday webinar series. I'm Josh Severns, U12 through U14 Boys Director of Coaching with TSC. Uh, you may remember me from the previous two webinars where I helped present uh, the goal setting webinar uh, and last week's intro to max analysis. Okay, glad to have all of you with us on this Wednesday evening. Tonight's topic is going to be player positions and roles of uh, players and breaking down the specific key attributes of, of player roles. Okay, we've got Greg Warden from uh, Down Under, that's Australia. For those of you that don't know, he'll be co-presenting as well. And he's uh, done a good job of selecting some specific player videos uh, to highlight some of our points throughout the presentation. Greg, go ahead and say hi and introduce yourself. Hey guys, uh, Coach Greg here. Uh, from Assistant uh, ECNL Director. Uh, thanks for jumping on with us today. Uh, yeah, Josh and I put together a good uh, PowerPoint here that I think you guys will enjoy. So yeah, once again, thanks for hopping on with us. Okay, so player positions, real quick definition and why we use them. Um, well, to assign you players positions on the team and helps you know what specific area of the field of play you're gonna be occupying. Um, and then you'll see through this presentation, it also helps define your role with the team, um, depending on what formation or system of play your team is playing, okay? Uh, so player positions and systems of play give the framework of organization for individual players on a team when playing in a game, okay? And we're gonna go through systems of play. This presentation is, is two parts, um, one on the numbering system and player positions and how they fit into the various systems of play that um, our players uh, play, whether it be 77, 99, 11, 11. Um, and then the second part will be on the roles for those positions and, and key attributes of those players in those specific spots on the field. So you can see here the numbering system um, for a 1-4-3-3 three, three system of play. Um, hopefully most of your coaches have used this numbering system for, for all ages in our club. If they have not, then hopefully you players are gonna learn um, some things tonight and, and the specific numbers and roles of those numbers and positions that uh, you play. Um, so they're also the basis for 77 and 99 formations, as I mentioned. Um, so start thinking of, you know, what number or numbers are you when you play with your own teams? Okay. Um, and we were, Greg and I really want to make this presentation as interactive as we can through Zoom. Um, so there'll be times where we ask uh, you all to show us your hand and, and um, also enter in info into the chat, okay, that Greg and I will continue to track. Um, so right now, as we look at these numbers, okay, go ahead and enter in the chat what you think one of the most popular numbers of all time is. Great, yep, we've got, okay, we've got a four, we've got 10 coming through nines great okay so of all time i agree in a 10 or a nine um are really popular positions historically these numbers one through 11 okay were used to identify and distinguish players on the field and also indicate what position the starting players would play and this dates back to the early 1900s where one through 11 uh, were used to number okay so what about today? In today's game, what's a really popular number and position of players? And I think I have two that stand out, and I want to hear from you all what you think. Good. Yep, seven already coming through. Good. Ten and eleven. Seven and eleven. Great. Great. So dealing with a good crowd here, Greg. Hopefully we can keep them engaged and interacting. Um, so moving on to the next slide here. Okay, so as we see, this system of play uh, for 77, all right, 
Um, a 1-3-1-2, and we always want to include the goalkeepers. Um, Coach Lou would get upset with us if we didn't, and EV. All right, but um, hopefully some of you academy players that are playing 77 have played in this formation before. Uh, as you notice, there's three lines of players. Uh, that's pretty consistent with a lot of systems of play. Um, you know, and then as you can see, we've got our three backs and it's three, four, and two. Um, and they're spread out across the back. One central midfield player, which is an eight, and then 10 and nine are our forwards in this system. All right. So before we move on to the next slides, be thinking of, be thinking of some of the formations that you all may have played uh, in 77 and 99. Okay. Um, and what's, before we move here, what's another 77 formation that, that's popular in the club? Um, and I know you guys got to glance at the next slide, but just don't mind enter one in. And then we're going to do the same for 99 and 11 v 11 when we get to those slides. Great. A one, two, three, one. Well done. Good. All right, so we have a one, three, one, two. Some of you entered. Sorry, Wi-Fi froze on me there. So next slide. We have a one, two, three, one. Slightly different from some of the um, ones that were entered, though we did have one. Uh, attendee put in a one, two, three, one, which is great. All right. So as the systems of play change, all right, question here is how does some of the roles for the three midfielders start to change? Um, which now the seven and 11 are more like wide midfielders um, as opposed to out and out forwards, like you may see in a system of play um, later on here in the presentation. Okay. So these are some of the things we want you all thinking about as we go through this um, webinar with you. Okay, now 9v9 formations. Before we go into 9v9 systems of play here, who can enter a popular 9v9 formation that uh, we use in the club? Good. Good, I like it. Good, different formations here. A one, three, three, two. Good, a one, three, two, three. All right, Greg, what's our next 9v9 system of play here? Good, a one, three, two, three, which was entered a couple times in the chat. Well done. All right, so as you can see in this system of play, we've got good balance and symmetry amongst our lines of players. All right, um, and now we've added uh, players to the formation. Obviously, um, now we have a two and three in the back three with the four and the keeper behind them. All right, now we have a six and a 10 in our midfield two. Um, and then the seven, nine, and 11 are more as forwards, whereas the previous 77 system of play we were more midfield wide players. All right. Um, so our next 9v9 system of play looks like this. The one, three, three, two. All right. Um, and this is a good slide to lead into 11v11 um, 11 11 formations. And before we get into those 11v11 11 11 systems of play, what are some popular uh, systems of play that you all use in the club? Good. 4-3-3. Three, three. Already coming in. All right, and any other ones? Four, two, three, one, all right, good. And the four, four, two, great. Okay, so 11 v 11 system of play. Greg, next slide when you get a chance. Good, so the one, four, three, three, you saw it at the start with the numbering system. Um, as we get to 11 v 11, this is our final transition. 
with systems of play, meaning the final game and, and you know, what all our U13 players and above will play. Um, and as you can see from the 1-3-3-2 three, three, to a 1-4-3-3, three, three, that allows us to transition U players from U12 to U13 um, and have a consistent and similar picture uh, with the two systems of play. All right, and now we have um, full 11 players on the field. Okay, we have our midfield three, six, eight, and 10. Okay, and then our four and five at center backs um, with the two and three um, as our outside backs. All right, uh, so this will be a good, this is the formation that we reference as player roles in the second portion of, of the webinar here. Um, but we do have another 11 v 11 formation uh, we'll talk about a little bit. Next slide. So our 4-4-2 here, okay, um, still has our three lines of players. Um, as you can see, the midfield is, is a diamond, okay, with the 7-11 uh, pinched in some. Uh, this 4-4-2 could be played in different ways. Uh, could have a flat midfield four, okay? It could have, you know, the six and eight um, in the midfield on their own with the 7-11 pushed wide, all right? Um, and as I said a second ago, okay, what 9v9 system of play that we've showed you is very similar to this 4-4-2. Great, yep. The one, three, three, two, well done. Well done, everyone. All right, so hopefully now you're really aware of the numbering system and the positions that we're gonna be talking about. Uh, and like I said, the four, three, three is our basis um, for discussing with you and, and presenting to you the key attributes of specific players and their roles um, in this system of play. Uh, so Greg is going to go ahead and start the next part of our presentation here with roles and key attributes. All right, guys. Uh, so yeah, before we get into the specific uh, position roles and key attributes, I want to point out uh, two important factors uh, that I want you guys to be thinking about when we go through these uh, positions. So the first one here um, is very important, reading and understanding the game. So when we go through the positions and the key attributes, right, you won't see this on each slide, okay, but we made it, made it its own slide because this is very important to all players, right? So as we go through every position, players must know that reading and understanding the game applies to every position and is vital in being a successful player along with these key qualities. Okay, all players must understand how and when to use these key attributes through reading and understanding the game. So for example, a key attribute listed for a winger could be that you're a good 1v1 attacker. Okay, however, if you can't recognize a 1v1 situation and you're really going into a 1v3 due to lack of reading and understanding the game, then your action to take someone on with the ball, even though you're good at it, it becomes a liability rather than an asset because you're not using it at the same at the right times right so make you know the biggest attribute for a player is reading and understanding the game knowing when to use their key attributes okay so that's very important to understand that as we go through this right the second one here okay is key attributes are, co are common attributes found so all players must understand that they do not need to possess all these key attributes all right these attributes we are listing are common attributes found in the position. But at the same time, players need to know if they want to be successful in that position, they should possess a good majority of these key attributes, right? There's also, you know, one or two attributes that you must have to be a successful player in certain positions, right? For example, a goalkeeper or a center back. If you're five foot five, you know, a key attribute is that you've got to be tall right? You've got to be a presence, all right? So there are one or two attributes in certain players that um, you've got to have, right? But at the same time, 
you don't have to have all of them. All right? Okay. <clears throat> so we'll now move into each specific position. Uh, Josh and I put this presentation together, which outlines key attributes a player needs to be successful in these roles. All right? Josh and I will not go through every single one, but we will pick out three to four that we believe are vital in those specific positions and we'll go into a bit more detail. Right? We're also going to ask you guys some questions and want you to give us those answers and tell us what you think in the chat. Right? So like Josh said before, we want this to be interactive. Okay, so the first one here is a goalkeeper. Right? So we've got the key attributes on the left there and we've got the roles on the right. So when I look at that, a big one that stands out to me is obviously is shot stopping. All right? I mean, the main uh, priority of a goalkeeper is to keep the ball out of the net. Uh, attributes a player needs to be successful in keeping the ball out of the net. Uh, obviously, you've got to be athletic. Okay, you've got to be athletic so you can get a, across that goal line, diving saves, uh, explosiveness as well. You've know, got to be sharp off the mark to come out and clean up those through balls, explosive to get up in the air, to take um, crosses out of the air. So you've got to be good with your hands. Like I said before, you've got to be tall. You know, if you're five foot five, you know, you're going to have that, that opportunity of being chipped. It's also going to be hard to deal with crosses. All right. And the last one there is, that I've got down here is confident. Okay. You've got to have that confidence to come out of your box. You can't be glued onto your line. Right. So there's a couple of attributes um, there. So if the, for the goalkeepers on this call, I uh, just want to point out that our director of goalkeepers, who are much more... Um, uh, knowing into the goalkeeper kind of area, right? They hold their weekly webinars on Thursday at 6 p.m., all right? So they've already done some on this. So if you really want to get into some detail, uh, get into those ones on Thursdays at 6 p.m., all right? So next one, uh, we've got our full backs or our outside backs, which are numbers two and three. So for me, this is a position that has really evolved over the years. Uh, you think of players, you know, like back in the day, Cafu, some of you may not know him, some of them, a fullback that may be more related to you as maybe Trent Alexander-Arnold from Liverpool, right? So uh, many teams now are using their fullbacks to get forward and influence the game, create overloads in wide areas to be able to break lines in behind and create good uh, crossing opportunities, whether that's for themselves or combining with the winger uh, to get good crossing opportunities. So some very big... Um, key attributes that a uh, outside back needs is um, got to be technically very, very sound, especially when it comes to crossing, crossing the ball. Sorry about that, guy. <laughs> that's, that's my dog. <laughs> and you've got to be a good 1v1 attacker, right? Now you're starting to join into the attack. You know, fullbacks are really getting involved in the attack. You've got to be a good 1v1 attacker and you've got to have a high fitness level. Right, you're up and down that wing. You, you, you're dropping back to defend. You're getting forward to support the attack. Right, so that's a couple of big ones that stand out to me. Um, one thing we can't forget, however, and sometimes you know this, this gets taken uh, for advantage, but you, at the end of the day, you're playing in a back four. So you're still a defender, right? So fullbacks, as much as we love them getting forward, and um, they're, they're still a defender, right? So you've got to be a good defender. You've got to be a good 1v1 defender. You're coming up against probably some of the quickest and most skillful players, and I'm talking about wingers, right? So we can't forget that you must be a good 1v1 defender, right? And getting back to that uh, thing we talked about at the start, you've got to read and understand the game. When do I press? When do I drop, right? So other things in that would be ball winner, right? You've got to be a good ball winner. Right, and you've uh, got to be athletic and fast because, like I said, you're coming up against some of the quickest and uh, most skillful players probably on the field, and that's the wingers. All right, okay, moving on to the next one. All right, so for me, um, defensively, some of the key attributes I saw in that video uh, was obviously um, good in the air, right? That was a big one that stood out to me. As a center back, you've got to be good in the air. Right, whether you know defensively number one, but we also saw there he was a presence in the box in corners. Right, so as a center back, like I talked about before, you've got to be tall, you've got to be a presence, you've got to be good in the air. Uh, other ones I saw in there, great one on one defender, great ball winner. Right, all those crosses in the box getting cleared. Right, sometimes it's not pretty either, like the one he chipped over the crossbar. You no, know, buddy, he, he, he meant that right. Sometimes it's not pretty, but 
he's first to every ball and he's clearing it. Physical, right? He's strong. Good. He had good speed. That he, he got drawn out to a wide area in some of those videos. Uh, and the winger went down the line, but he was able to get stay with him and win the ball, right? So that's just a couple of uh, things I saw in there. Josh, can you see the chat? You see what we got? Um, we some of the what some people wrote in there. Let's see if I can bring it up. All right, Greg, before, before we play um, this next video, all right, everyone that's on our webinar with us, you players, show of hands, how many of you play in midfield? Um, great. Okay, well, good, almost, almost half or so of our uh, attendees. Okay, so... While you're watching this next video clip, right? Look at the specific details um, on Busquets and how he moves, his awareness, um, and, and how technically clean he is on the ball. Okay, look at all of those areas, um, and we'll go through the uh, after the video the next description of uh, number six. All right, great. So. As you can see on this slide, uh, the roles and key attributes for a number six. And hopefully you got to see some of the quality of Sergi Busquets in that video. Um, we know that the videos can tend to be a little choppy on these Zoom webinars, but hopefully you got to see um, some of his play. Uh, and some of the characteristics of him that stood out for me um, from the video clips is that he's always an option to help build out, okay? And then supporting possession um, and, and looking to play good penetrating passes from, from center and midfield. Um, he had really good mobility. Um, and these were a wide range of clips um, from Busquets uh, playing career. He's obviously a little older, but um, when he was, at the top of his game. He's just one of the better midfield uh, six players in the, uh, in the world. So as you can see too, his awareness helped him guide the team's tempo at times and the speed of play. Um, with the six being such a link between back four and midfield and forwards, um, that's really important. Okay, it's also important that this player has the ability to keep possession even under pressure. All right. Um, so if we look, key attributes, he's athletic, good speed, which doesn't necessarily characterize Busquets. He may not win every foot race against quicker players, attacking players with pace, but because of how he reads the game and he has such good awareness, As Greg mentioned, the key attributes are some attributes, um, and you can still play in these positions and not have all of these qualities, um, which Busquets, um, you know, And then if you see in the role, his role, okay, um, he can get forward, helps midfield shape, um, you know, and he also organizes not only the attacks, but transitions to attack and defend um, can go through him. All right, so that was a good example of a number six player for, for you all to see. Now we're going to move on to the number eight. Okay, um, and before I talk about the number eight, go ahead and enter in the chat 
some number eights that you all know that are popular nowadays and, and good players in the eight position? Good, we've got great, great examples. I was waiting for um, a women's national team player. Good, Lindsay Oran was mentioned, Luka Modric, well done. Um, good, Ali Ag Alexander, Modric again. Um, all right, thanks, thanks for that input. Okay, so we see here, Paul Scholes, all right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. No Steven Gerrard? No Gerrard yet. Must be more Man U fans out there. Right. Um, okay, so the number eight has similar roles to the six, okay, and, and attributes. All right. Um, but this is the midfield player that we consider. Having a good, uh, a good physical attribute is stamina for the number eight. Um, some athleticism, so great fitness and stamina. Um, obviously, again, passing ability is important uh, because linking back four and midfield and forwards, okay? Um, being a good ball winner, having a shot and being able to attack 1v1, all right? Which those players that have been uh, mentioned in the chat uh, those they have those key attributes as well, okay. Um, so and I think too it's important that uh, the eight looks to attack um, and, and try to p penetrate with their movement um, by either passing or running with the ball, okay. Um, and similar to the six, uh, another role uh, for for the eight and the six is to be selfless, um, selfless with their effort uh, because they are covering a good portion of the field of play. Okay. And they have to do a lot of work and have a high work rate um, and do a lot of little things to help keep the team connected. All right. And that's what we mean by, by selfless effort. Um, so now we have an example of the number 10 in a video. Okay. His athleticism, explosiveness, technically sharp. And if you could see, every time he received a pass, he was either already facing forward or was able to collect the pass and turn forward, all right, which allowed him um, to really look to pass or dribble and help him create chances for his teammates or himself by doing that, okay? Uh, which that plays into his uh, role as a playmaker in the number 10, um, ability to combine and attack 1v1, okay? And if you notice, he also had really good mobility, okay? He occupied left and right channels, as you saw in the clips. Um, he also attacked centrally, um, and at times he was deep in midfield looking to attack, Okay. Um, and again, work rate to cover those areas of the field is very important, all right? Um, and as you can see, he um, was very quick and decisive. Um, so his mental awareness is very sharp. Um, he's able to play 360 degrees, okay? And looking for openings to exploit, all right? Um, so with all that being said, who are some number 10s that you all think of um, in the game that are really popular now that you all like to watch? Go ahead and enter those in the chat and we'll move on to the forwards. Good, yeah, we've got Messi now playing more in 10. Good, Rose Lavelle, well done. Bruno Fernandez, Dybala, I like it. Great, Messi, popular one. Yeah, one thing about that video as well, you know, if you're wanting to be a 10, I know it's just a clip of good highlights, but 
look how many times he looking to break lines and the weight of the pass breaking those lines and the vision. You know, if you want to be a 10, you know, it's in there. Great passer, creative, right? And Josh talked about, you know, his body shape to look forward. But you watch those, that clip and just watch how he breaks lines, always constantly looking to play forward and how well-timed those passes are to break those lines. You know, that, that back four line in and around the box is the hardest line to break because there's not much space between the back four and the goalkeeper, right, in and around the box. Just watch how well-timed his passes are. So if you're aspiring to be a, be a 10, right, that's just watch that video again and think about those couple of things. It's, it's impressive. All right, going on to the wingers now. Uh, here, here's another video. All right, last video uh, of the day. All right, so enjoy this one. All right, so looking at that video, a couple of things stood out to me. Obviously, fast and explosive, right? How many times did Mane get that ball in a wide area and, and want to take players on? And how fast and explosive was he to go by those players, right? So great 1v1 attacker, confident, creative, all right? You've, you've got to be a risk taker, willing to take players on as a winger, right? One other thing towards the end of the video there was, you know, he scored a couple of goals. You've got to be a goal scorer, right? You, you want to play in the front three, you know, we'll get into the striker soon, but as a winger or a forward, you've got to have end product, right? What I mean by end product is you've got to have, if you're playing out wide, you've got to have good delivery in the box, right? So that video, that's the one thing it didn't really show was crosses in the box, but we all know, you know, wing has got to have that final service. And it's all about having good delivery, but also, right, can you pick someone out with the cross? It doesn't always have to be a cross that's in the air looking into a good area. Sometimes it's a cutback, right? So that's what we go back to at the very start. I'm talking about reading and understanding the game, right? So, you, you know, there are a couple of things that stood out to me in that, um, in that video, right? So go through them again as good uh, 1v1 attacker, risk taker, athletic, fast and explosive, uh, great service from wide areas, creative, playmaker, combination play. So you saw Mane score that final goal there from an inside, inside area, central in front of goal. You don't always have to be wide, right? Creativity comes with the ball, but also off the ball. As a winger, it's very um, important that you're creative with your runs. If you just stay out wide, right? It might become too predictable for the fullback up against you. So you're creative with your runs, you come inside, you go outside. As a fullback, it's very hard to, to mark, right? So, and the last one there I got down is goal scorer. Yeah, as a winger, you know, you've, you've got to be a threat to goal. Okay, so going into our final one here, uh, yeah, number nine, our center forward. All right. So when I think of a striker, all right, uh, when, I, when I say striker, what, what do you guys, what comes to mind? Put into the chat, when, when you think of a striker, what comes to mind? What's the num what, what do you think is the number one key attribute of a striker? All right? For me, it's got to be a goal scorer. Right? If you want to be a successful center forward, you must be a goal scorer. You must have that killer instinct and that hunger to score goals. We look at our key qualities and what, what you need to be a, go a goal scorer. So for me, you've got to be a good finisher. Right, and whether that's on uh, in the air with your head, right, or whether it's on the ground with the ball at your feet, right, be a goal scorer, shoot often from everywhere, get into the attacking box. And um, you've got to be technically sharp. You've got to have that ability to get that quick shot off, or have the skill to create that half yard uh, to get that shot off in tight spaces in the box. And um, you've got to be great with your back to goal, so good hold up play. And um, so you've got to bring uh, other players into the game. Um, fast and explosive is a big one, right? Whether that is with the ball to beat a player or whether that is off the ball movement, right? To get in front of your defenders to score off crosses or to latch onto a through ball. You've got to be fast and, and explosive with your movement to get in front of center backs. And the last one, you know, which is all about that goal scoring mentality, you've got to be confident, right? You have to be demanding of the ball. You have to be confident. You have to have a winner's, winner's mentality and an inner belief that you can dominate games and score goals, right? So number one thing there, if you want to be a center forward, if you want to be a successful center forward, you've got to be a goal scorer. Um, so here's a couple of uh, in-depth YouTube videos that I would like you guys to go and watch after. It doesn't have to be today. Whenever you, you like, this um, webinar will get uploaded in the next 24 hours. Okay, so 
obviously once this ends, you may not ha have access to this until we upload it. But these are some really good, you know, they vary from six to 10 minutes in depth uh, YouTube videos that talk about different roles, right? So if you're a fullback and you want to learn a little bit more, uh, you know, follow that one and so on. Another little tip I'll give you, uh, if you're a center back, right, you might want to go watch the striker, you know, get into the mind of a striker, right? If you're a fullback, go watch the winger video, right? Get into the mind of a winger and what they're trying to do, right? Just a little tip there that can help you. And um, so final thing here is uh, we'll open it up to some questions. Um, so while you guys go into the chat, if any of you have questions, me and um, Josh are going to go and answer uh, two questions that we have here, right? So the first one is, at what age should I start to focus on a specific position? So it's a good question. And I don't think there is a specific age as there are many factors that could affect where you play positionally. However, you should have a good idea of what key attributes you are forming as a player by the time you're around, you know, entering high school. You know, around that 15, kind, you know, 14, 15, 16 kind of area, um, another important thing um, is that as a, uh, as a young player, you know, younger than that, you're looking anywhere from, you know, six, eight, up to about 14. It's very important that you're not just stuck in one position, right? And obviously that's coach driven, but um, it's, it's, it's better for you guys to play a few positions so that you can learn and understand different roles. This will help with the most important part of all this and uh, what we talked about at the start and what the, you know, one of the most important key attributes is, and that's reading and understanding the game, right? Um, I'll let Josh answer the second one there. Yeah, so feel free to continue to enter questions in the Q&A or the chat. Since everyone's been using the chat, you can stay in that and, and put any questions. Um, but Greg and I thought of these two, and um, so my question here, uh, for you all that I'll go through, what should I focus on now as a player, my role or my key attributes? Okay, well, I'll backtrack a little bit and hopefully through the presentation and, and starting with the numbering system and the system of play, um, you all are able to see that as you move through 77, 99, 11, 11, um, that you can start to understand player roles and attributes. Um, and then regardless of what formation you're playing, you have an understanding of what it means to play in those uh, roles. So um, in those positions, sorry. So now currently in the situation uh, that we're all facing here, I would lean more towards focusing on key attributes um, for yourself as a player. Uh, and reason being because these are things that you can practice on your own. We're talking about uh, technical ability uh, you know, of, of backs, midfielders, and forwards, uh, specific areas of technique that you can focus on to improve on, um, specific uh, physical qualities, um, improving your stamina, improving your, your quickness over short distance. Um, but they're connected, um, as I hope you saw through the presentation. Um, the creative players like David Silva um, and Sadio Mane that you saw in the clips, they're very technically sound and they have a really good relationship with the ball and their ability to uh, be creative and effective when they play is because they've worked hours and hours on end on that technique. Okay, so that's just one example I wanted to uh, bring up for you. So only a couple questions that I'm seeing, um, one of which, where is the goalkeeper? Uh, and that was referring to the YouTube video examples. We can easily add that, but like Greg said, we uh, defer to Coach Lou and Coach EV on all things goalkeeper. Um, you know, and we know that they've been doing their weekly webinar series on Thursdays at 6 p.m. as well. Um, but we can easily track down um, a good example of goalkeeping video for you all and post that on the virtual training center. Um, another question that came in 
should we be working out and, and taking runs um, and, and staying active? And yes, that, that is the answer to that question. Please, I hope that everyone's using uh, the soccer workouts that directors and coaches are sending through to everybody um, and trying to make the most of this situation. So um, if we get back on the fields in May, uh, you players are ready to go, and, and we can pick up where we left off when all this started, okay? Yeah, let me come in on that one, Josh, a little bit. Uh, I think, you know, don't take for granted the time you have right now. I mean, yes, when you we're in season, you you know, training three, four times a week with a game here and there, which, you know, which is great, which is – but when do you ever get so much time where you can focus in on your real weaknesses – um, that you want to work on? When can you focus on so much time to work on your speed and agility and fitness, technical ability? There's no reason players can't come out of this so, you know, really good uh, on the ball of technical ability with a better uh, speed and agility, faster feet, better, you know, one mile time, <laughs> you know, better fitness overall, you know. So to answer that question, and we can't stress enough, uh, it, we know it's a tough time. It is, but there's a great time right now to go out there and really work on the things, you know, that normally you may not have time for. Great. So if there are no other questions, um, Greg and I will wrap this up and we want to say thank you to everybody that stayed on with us. Um, almost every one of you stayed on for the entire presentation. Uh, so we greatly appreciate that. Um, and we had really good numbers again for, for this uh, webinar. And uh, we hope some of you learned some things. And we also appreciated everyone's interaction along the way. Um, we we're always figuring out ways to improve our engagement through these webinars. And um, really liked how everyone sent through uh, answers in the chat and everything else. So that's greatly appreciated. Greg, anything else? No, that's it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for being on. Thank you.